This podcast is brought to you by Podcast Nation. You are listening to As a Woman, Episode 71, How to Be Vegan. In this episode, I'm talking all about a whole food plant-based diet, why this is a lifestyle change, and the best ways to transition to this type of living. Welcome to As a Woman, the podcast hosted by fertility physician, Dr. Natalie Crawford, to educate and empower women. Each week, learn about your health, your fertility, and how they relate to your true self. Become a part of the community, fostering collaboration over competition while learning how to authentically find your voice and amplify others as a woman. Hey friends, welcome back. Today I'm talking all about how to transition to a whole food plant-based diet or a vegan diet. Now, this is not about why you should be vegan. I've covered that in other episodes, or maybe I need to cover it. But this is really about the actual steps on what you should do if you want to make a big change in what you eat and how you eat. I'm going to be really transparent that I first transitioned to a vegan diet back in 2009 like January 1, 2009, and I decided I would do it for 30 days just to be healthy. You know, a brand new start of the year, let's be healthy type of thing. And I had no idea what I was doing. So legit, I was a junk food vegan, and I tell everybody that because I didn't know what to do or what to eat, and Oreos are vegan, so I would eat those. Really, I wasn't making good choices. And that's where, number one, the difference in why we say vegan versus when we say whole food plant-based, because if you're brand new to this world, they may seem like the same thing to you. And on principle, they're very close. But let's think about starting with what's different. Vegan purely is a, you do not consume animal products. So to be clear, you don't eat meat, you don't eat dairy, that's no drinking milk, no cheese, no honey. Anything that comes from an animal or is an animal, eggs, you don't eat it. So you could literally survive on Lay's potato chips and be a vegan. I'm not saying you should. In fact, I am saying you should not do that. But officially, if we're going by the book definition, Lay's potato chips and Dr. Pepper is a vegan diet. So you can already see, well, that's not good. What a whole food plant-based diet is often abbreviated WFPB. This is a lifestyle approach or a diet where you limit animal products and you emphasize whole foods or real foods. So let's think about that. Vegetables, fruits, whole grains, non-processed foods, limiting unnatural sugars. So really, this is a whole different way of eating than being a junk food vegan. You can't be junk food, whole food, plant-based. It's really limiting out processed foods and sugars, eating real true foods, and avoiding animal products. Now, I'll use the term liberally sometimes with some people because I do think I believe whole food, plant-based, and those of us in the field that study or have an interest in nutrition believe this means no animal products as well. So it is like the non-processed food vegan diet. So the opposite of a junk food vegan, but still avoiding animal products. But if you're listening to this and let's say that's unrealistic for you, can you be whole food plant-based with some animal products? Of course, this is your life. You make your decisions. So I don't think it's all or nothing. And I think living this way completely changes so many things about your body. And one thing that I learned really quickly is that it made me feel better. And I think that's really hard to describe. But when you take out the junk and you're not putting processed stuff in your body and you're not putting animal products in your body, you will function differently. Your digestive tract functions differently. Your energy level is different. Your skin is better. There's just something different that happens when you're not putting things in your body that are processed or putting things in your body that have high levels of toxins or hormones or cause a lot of inflammation. And so that's why eating this way is really a lifestyle change 
and not just a diet. It's not something you do particularly to lose weight. Although most of the time you will lose weight if you eat like this. What it really is, is a way of living, treating your body with respect and treating the world compassionately, saying that you want your impact to be meaningful and you don't want to harm this world any more than you have to. So I think there are health benefits to a whole food plant-based diet. And I think there's huge environmental benefits. And I think it's really interesting the time that we are living in right now, where we have seen the meat industry take a really big hit during COVID. And that's really fascinating and really sad. And there was a lovely piece written in the New York Times this week that talked about why eliminating meat is essential for preventing future pandemics and how reducing the consumption of animal products can save our environment and help with climate change. It's called The End of Meat is Here. So really trying to say that approaching this diet, and I have a lot of people who say, okay, well, I would love to eat that way. That sounds great, but I don't know what to do. So that is the number one barrier. The number one barrier is that people don't know how to do it or it feels overwhelming. And I was there. I grew up in a meat and potatoes house where the meal dinner revolved around whatever meat you were having. And then you'd have potatoes and then you have a vegetable. So trying to transition when you have no meat on your plate and create a meal was a very, very hard concept at first. So often I will tell people, you don't have to just say, today is the day I'm ending meat. I mean, that's how I did it, but you don't have to do that. You can start to wean this out of your diet. And I talk to patients about this because that feels more attainable. So I say, okay, at first we are going to go down one meal of the day is the maximum that you can have an animal product. Okay. That suddenly makes you start learning how to be creative for those other meals. So it's not everything at once. You can still go back to some of your comfort things that you know about, but you're starting to think about how do I have breakfast without eggs and how do I have sandwiches without meat? And what do I have for dinner if I don't have chicken or something? So now you're starting to process each meal a little bit differently. So that's number one. It doesn't have to all be at once. Don't be afraid to gradually transition into this. Think of it as weaning off of meat if that makes it feel less scary. Stop being afraid. Number two, I promise you, you can give up cheese and eggs. That's what the barrier is for like 99% of people. And you can start with everything else and give up cheese and eggs last. And that's fine. Or you can decide you're never going to give them up. I'm not here to say what's right for you or not. But if there's one thing that you eat that makes the whole thing feel too overwhelming, ignore it at first. Start focusing on the other stuff. When you start to feel better and you start to feel more confident in how you eat, then you can give up that thing if you decide you want to. So don't have to give up cheese and eggs off the get-go. I'm not forcing you into that if that's the thing. So don't let one barrier make you forget the whole process. Number three, you will absolutely get enough protein and iron. And I'm so sick of answering that as every vegan on earth is. I'm so sick of answering that question, but it's okay. You will absolutely get enough as long as you're not living the junk food vegan. So if you're whole food plant-based, vegetables and grains and beans, lentils, you're going to have so much good nutrition coming in your body. You will be fine. So you have to not fear that you're not going to get enough protein. The American diet is so overwhelmingly obsessed with protein consumption, and it is okay to not have protein, 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 but you will get enough if you're doing whole food plant-based. So let's not worry about it. Number four, you have to be okay to experiment. I know you just got to be, you got to learn how to break out of your old habits and embrace new ones. I mean, it's just like if you're going to go to the gym and start picking up weights, you don't know how to do some of these things. So you have to learn them and experiment and try. That's what it's going to require at first. I find that meal prepping is much, much easier than having no idea of what's going on. And I'm not all Renee Paro style, like prep everything from the get go for the whole, whole, whole week. I mean, I wish I could be, but I plan out our meals. We know what we're going to have for dinner at the house. So we don't have to worry about that. And we really simplify things. So 
If you've listened to some of the other podcasts, you may know there's some things that we do weekly just because it's easy. So Taco Tuesday, we're going to have tacos. So let's just start here. You're going to start meal planning. You're going to start planning out your meals and think about different ways to do the same things. So if you're going to have tacos, you can have black beans, tomatoes, avocados. You can have Brussels sprouts with roasted kale and avocado. You can have roasted cauliflower or butternut squash, squash or zucchini, mushrooms and peppers. I mean, what can you not put in a taco? So say, okay, I'm gonna have taco Tuesday and here's six different things that can go in a taco and boom, now that's an easy meal that's not overwhelming for you. You may have just heard my little spiel and say, Brussels sprouts in a taco. Yeah, they can be really great. I have a recipe off of Camille Styles, and it's for Brussels sprout tacos, and there's this amazing peanut sauce that goes on them. Guys, it's fabulous. So do not be afraid to try things and start where it's easy. Do you like tacos? Yes. Okay, great. You can have vegan tacos. Poof. Suddenly, that is an attainable thing that doesn't feel very overwhelming. So now you know you can do tacos. And this is where I recommend people start when they're trying to transition. What are meals that you normally eat? And how can we make a vegan version of that meal because it feels comfortable to you? Then you can start researching brand new recipes and experimenting with cooking and learning brand new things. But you don't have to go get some complicated recipe off the get go. Let's take what you know and let's modify it. So another good option, I grew up with a spaghetti and a lot of you guys have heard me call it Christmas spaghetti or beach spaghetti or lake spaghetti or Easter spaghetti. But when I grew up, it was a spaghetti casserole that had a meaty red sauce. And that's what it was. And it was always delicious. And at every special occasion, or I would just love when we had it. Okay, well, I'm not going to now put ground beef in my spaghetti. So does that mean Christmas spaghetti is just a wash? No. How do we modify it? So I have a version with extra diced tomatoes that gives it that chunky feeling. We've also made it with lentils too, that the kids love because it gives it that feeling of being a little bit heartier. So then I took Christmas spaghetti and I have three different versions. I have one with just extra diced tomatoes. I have one with lentils and I have one where I also cut up squash, zucchini, onion, and mushroom. Poof, Christmas spaghetti now has three different versions on how I can do that. So I didn't create that recipe from scratch. It was something I knew and was comfortable with that now I've modified to fit this lifestyle. And so start where you're comfortable and slowly begin to push your boundaries. And one thing that really has changed is plan your meals around the vegetables you want to eat. And I know that sounds crazy. And think about different ways to cook them just from what you've always known. So maybe you've always just steamed green beans. Well, they could be baked in the oven too. Give them a little bit crispier. That's a different flavor. I love to cook things in the oven like cauliflower and butternut squash Brussels sprouts, chop things up, you know, put them in a bowl, put salt on them, put them on a pan, cook them at 350 for 20 to 30 minutes. There's something. I also love to take cans of chickpeas. So take garbanzo beans and, you know, rinse them out, drain them and coat them with a little bit of salt. I really love salt and cook them at 350 for about 20 to 25 minutes. And you're going to get these little crunchy chickpeas soft in the middle. My kids will eat these by the handful and they're great to throw on top of salads and other things. So sometimes meal prepping it is just getting some things ready so you can more easily grab and go when you're trying to put a salad together or something for lunch. And so when you're putting things together, it sometimes helps to know or to have ideas about what you like and what works with your day. I love to take a salad to work. We're obsessed with buying some of the bags of like pre-cut stuff. That's just so easy and I can put it in a bowl and add in chickpeas or almonds or blueberries, a little dressing, stir it all up. I usually do it every morning and I'll put half in the fridge for my hubby and I'll take the other half to work. But then it's done and it's easy and I don't have to microwave it. Or the same thing, if we cook, we'll say spaghetti, And then I have leftovers. I'm going to then dish it right into a glass container that can go and be heated up at work so that they're already portioned out to be easy to grab and go. Make your snacks, fruits and nuts and veggies and hummus and not just a process bar. I know a process bar is easy and so it feels comfortable, 
but really try to think about how often can you incorporate whole foods into your diet. I think a few places people get hung up. One is baking. Because if you're like me and baking is very comforting and you love making muffins or cakes, there are ways to bake that are still vegan. You just have to replace substituting things out. So you have to replace eggs with a different substitute. My favorite is a flax egg. So you actually can take flaxseed and you can put a tablespoon of the flaxseed in with three tablespoons of water, stir it up really aggressively, let it sit for about three to five minutes, And then that can be a substitute for an egg. And that's what we do when we bake. So we substitute eggs with flax eggs. I'm not going to say it's the exact same consistency. It takes a little while to figure it out and to get used to it. It's a little more of a whole grain feeling. So a little more of a whole grainy taste versus maybe your pure white cake fluffy thing. But we really love it. And I promise when you put frosting on top of it, cakes and stuff will be really great. Regardless, just saying That is something for you to consider. So don't be afraid. You can still have cake and make cupcakes and we do all kinds of fun things. You can substitute butter with vegan butter. That's super easy. You can substitute milk with any of the plant milks. We like oat milk a lot, but almond soy, they're all fine. Just experiment. Don't be afraid to try. And here's the biggest thing in my mind is not being afraid to experiment, not being afraid to fail. I mean, shouldn't that be a motto in life overall? But really viewing this as an adventure. It is not a diet. It's not that you can't. So nobody's restricting anything from you, but you are just making better choices for your body and better choices for the planet. And I will tell you, when people ask me about raising kids and like our philosophy, what we do at home is when we're cooking family meals, they have usually the same version of what we're eating. That's what we cook for dinner, that's what we're eating. But when we order out, or we go to a restaurant or back when we went to restaurants, we let them order whatever they want. So if you're at school and you want to get cheese pizza, fine, that's your call. You know, I believe that kids need free will and they're not restricted from anything. It's just not what we eat in the house. And this works for us. I, every time I say this, I get hate from people who say, I can't believe you let your kids eat cheese, whatever. To me, they eat so many more whole foods and vegetables than I ever did at their age. They are exposed to all kinds of things. They are not afraid to try things. They don't like everything. They're four and five, just like normal children. But this works for our family. Same thing with my husband. He's transitioned completely now. But for years and years, we would just cook a vegan meal. And if we went out to a restaurant and he wanted fish, he'd order fish. So I think you got to figure out what works for you and your family. And for this, the one meal philosophy, it works for us. It also helps keep life simpler. I mean, I don't really have time to make four different meals for people, nor do I want to, nor do I want to cook meat in the house. It grosses me out now. So that's not going to work for us. Everybody, you have to figure out what's going to work for you. There is no judgment. Know why you have decided this. And then it's really easy to say no to eggs because you have your own reasons and you're looking out for you and you're looking out for the environment. I also want to say that eating at restaurants is not hard or ordering food out is not hard. You just have to be free to ask questions and be clear with what you need because that can be overwhelming. If you just want to go off the menu, I don't want you to have to feel like you have to eat salad all the time if that's not what you want. So many restaurants, especially nice restaurants, if you tell them you're vegan or you don't eat animal products, they will... Find something on the menu that will work for you or they will modify it or they'll make you something completely off the menu. I've had that happen at so many places and they're always gracious. And I think give the chef creative freedom. So say, hey, I'm vegan. What would you recommend? Oh, we can cook this off the menu or oh, we can modify this. I'm very lucky because in Austin, it's a very food friendly town. So there's a lot of vegan places that make it very, very easy. But in general, you have to step out of fear of being different or unconventional if you're going to be whole food plant-based. And that's great. Be different. Stay true to who you are. Feel really good about the food and the fuel you're putting into your body. I promise you, you are going to feel better. And here's the thing I always think about. We in medicine love to chop up our bodies into these different parts. So I'm a reproductive endocrinologist. I'm a specialist when it comes to fertility and women's health. Sure. 
But does that mean that your ovaries really function different than a different endocrine gland when it comes to needing nutrients, how they respond to inflammation and other things? You have one body. Yes, we divide it all up, but you are one person. And the food you put in, the toxins you expose yourself to, that impacts all of your organ systems. It impacts your chance of heart disease, diabetes, GI issues, PCOS, menopause, all of it. So my plea to you is that there is so much in this world you cannot control. I have learned that, you know that, we all know that we're living in a global pandemic. But what you can control is what you put in your body, what you choose to eat. And don't let food be what you turn to for comfort. I'm so guilty of this. I mean, I had french fries at work this week, so I'm guilty of this. You don't have to be perfect. But try to let when you feel overwhelmed, your escapes be exercise or good talks with friends or something else. And let food be fuel. Because if you're turning to food and you're eating crappy things that give you a sugar high then you feel, to make you feel better, what's going to happen is you're going to feel worse. You're actually going to then feel both emotionally and physically worse. So look at food as a constant, something you deserve to be putting into your body that's good for you and allow it to be something that is fuel, that is really going to be there and make you feel better instead of making you feel worse. For everybody who says, oh, I'd love to be vegan, but I can't, you most certainly can. It all starts by little changes. It all starts by taking little steps into the unknown. Then you're suddenly going to get more confident, learn how to cook with different vegetables, incorporate other things into your diet. It will become easier, I promise. Today, it's so much easier even than when I started because now there's so many great vegan bloggers and on Instagram and other places. I can literally go to Instagram and get a really cool vegan recipe to make. And that makes life so much easier. So take advantage of those resources. Also, I have a vegan starter guide. I think Danielle Bellardo does. So does Tori, who is Dr. Fit. There's a lot of us who are physicians who are putting out content to try to make it easier for you to take that first step of the journey. So go research, go learn about yourself, go learn about your body, start making a change if that's something that you want to do. As always, you guys, thank you so, so much. I am so appreciative for all of you. You can follow me on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. You can also follow me on YouTube, Natalie Crawford MD. I think I am just getting a thousand subscribers, which means so much to me. So I would love it if you would go subscribe and I would love it if you would give me any topic ideas that you'd love to hear on the podcast or you'd love to see on YouTube. That would mean the world. Again, thank you guys so much. My name is Len Webb. And I'm Vincent Williams. We'd like to welcome you to our documentary podcast, The Class of 1989. 1989. Over the course of six episodes, Vincent and I will examine the importance of six black films that came out in 89 and how they shape and influence popular culture, filmmaking, and society in general. Come on, sucker. Let's get it on. New episodes will begin running weekly on March 6th. 